Okay, so I gave an Ignite talk a while ago about some words and their meaning and managed to put a whole load of people off their salads for the rest of their lives. Um, I'm going to try not to do that tonight, but I'm going to return to the subject of language and the evolution and history of the English language. And in order to do that, we need to look at the evolution and history of human language, uh, which takes us back to a period of somewhere between two and a half million years ago and a hundred thousand years ago. This should have changed by now. Ah, see, I was looking at that, and that's not moving. <laughs> okay, so Captain Caveman, two and a half million years ago, 100,000 years ago, we can't pin it down any more than that because we don't have any written records. Written records come in uh, about 3,000 years ago um, in uh, Sumeria cuneiform, and from that, our, I'm trying to catch up now, our alphabet developed. Um, when we had our, the Latin alphabet finally developed, it was about the same time we had Proto-English, which was all the languages which developed from the, you know, the Picts and the Celts and the Vikings. The first Old English language um, came in about the 5th century AD, um, and it hung around for quite a long time. We got sort of Old English literacy in about 7th century AD, and it lasted until about 1066 when we had our 300 year enforced love affair with French. Um, it was uh, basically the rules all spoke French because they all were French. Uh, the rest of us spoke English, and so we had the first class divide in uh, language um, until we had a bit of a falling out called the Hundred Years' War, where the ruling class stopped speaking French and started speaking kind of Latinate version of English. And there was a lot of diversity amongst language across the country. We also had at this period the start of what's called the Great Vowel Shift. Uh, for reasons which we still don't really understand, we started pronouncing vowels slightly differently all across the country at um, different places and different rates. Uh, the main problem with this was it coincided with the introduction of the printing press. So as the, the way we spoke and the way we pronounced words was changing, we were actually fixing the way we spelt words, which is why if you've ever wondered why it's so really horrible to spell in English, it's because of the great vowel shift. Um, of course, when we have the printed word, you get a great explosion of written vocabulary. Uh, Shakespeare was credited with adding about 2,000 words to our written vocabulary, whether he wrote them himself or borrowed them from other people of other languages, we don't really know. But of course, Shakespeare couldn't spell his own name the same way three times in a row, um, because we still didn't have the kind of standardisation we're used to today. We had to wait till the 18th century to have the sort of dictionaries that we know of that kind of classify and define words and tell us how to spell them properly. But even at this stage in the 18th century, sort of literacy was still a niche interest. It wasn't until the Industrial Revolution where uh, factory owners decided it might be useful to have workers who could read and write, so they started to educate them. And of course, whenever you start to educate the workers, uh, the people at the top of society start freaking out. Um, and they really worried about the effect of literacy amongst the common people, uh, especially there was a moral panic about the Gothic and Romantic novels of the late 19th century. Uh, but thankfully, we managed to survive that very real danger and um, as mass education took off in the early 20th century, mass literacy became a reality sort of in the mid to late 20th century, um, at which point it all starts to go to hell. Um, in 1972, the uh, English, Queen's English Society started uh, to defend our decent language, and they had to deal with management speak, which as we all know is the fine art of saying as little as you can, but using as many words as possible. Uh, then we have mobile phones, and mobile phones bring us uh, text speak. Um, so you've got a restricted amount of characters that you can use. So rather than having the great vowel shift, we in fact basically have the great vowel removal. And then we get the internet comes along, and everybody's favourite food stuff gets included, which is of course spam, where we have essentially computers talking to computers in computer generated English, each trying to convince the other that there's actually a human behind the keyboard somewhere. Um, which it all results in the fact that the very, very sad news that last month um, the campaign, the plain uh, interest that the like, the Queen's English Society announced that they couldn't find anybody to run it anymore um, and they're going to be closing down. Um, I wonder whether the, the very, very final last nail in the coffin might have been the recent publishing phenomena. I'm just going to leave this here <laughs> as a personal plea to the need to you. Really, it's not worth it. Um, and that is my final slide. Thank you.